This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And Father, this morning, as we look into the Word of God, we ask, oh God, that you grant us a deeper spiritual understanding of what Christ has already accomplished for us through his death on the cross, Father. We ask, oh God, that your spirit move on him, that opening our heart to the truth this morning. We receive the truth with joy, with excitement, and with faith in our heart. Thank you, Father. And let the people of God say a big amen. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. So quickly, I'm speaking of what I call divine exchange. Divine exchange. Now that is what took place at the cross. That's what took place at the cross. So you see, there are many Christians today that do not really understand what Christ has done or what really took place at the cross of Christ. Now pay attention to this very well. Now when you don't understand divine exchange that took place at the cross of Christ between you and Christ. Now so there was a divine exchange that took place. At the cross, when Christ died, between us and Christ, between sinners and the righteous Son of God, all right? And it is so important, so crucial, so vital for every believer, everyone that believes in Christ, to understand this divine exchange. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because when you understand this, it's going to change your mindset towards God. It's going to affect your prayer. Now listen to me, there are still many things that we are praying about today. There are many things that people fast about today that they don't need to pray and fast about. You know why? Because it is already given to them, all right? But we are still asking God for what God has already given. It's because we do not really understand really what happened at the cross of Christ. And this morning I want you to follow me. We want to take a very close look at what really happened at the cross of Christ, which I call divine exchange, divine exchange. Now glory be to God. And what we're going to do, all right, as we understand it, we're going to look at divine exchange that happened under the old covenant all right now we're going to look at that uh, because that is a shadow and a copy of things to come now listen to this now all those rituals all those ceremonies and all those sacrifices and the system of worship under the lord under the old covenant the bible says it is a shadow of something to come the bible says it is just a copy all right it is not the real image in other words god is speaking to them in picture do you get what I'm talking about, and we're going to look at that. Look at Hebrew chapter 10. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 1 For the Lord having a shadow of the good things to come. So, you see, the law, all those rituals, all those sacrifices, all those offerings, all those ceremonies, the Bible says they are what a shadow of the good things to come. Not the very image of the things, and they can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who will approach perfect. All right, so you see. Now, what we're going to look at today, now pay attention, it is a shadow. God was speaking to the, the saints under the old covenant in pictures, in shadow, that He has something much more better. In the future, all right? So you see, Christ is the reality of that. And we're going to look at the shadow, all right? And when we look at the shadow, we're going to learn Christ. We're going to see how this shadow, how this copy speaks of Christ and what Christ did for us at the cross. Is somebody paying attention, all right? Because the Bible says, things that were written before, now Romans 15 verse 4, they were written for our learning, all right? So we're going to learn from this. We're going to see how Christ is indeed a true reality of of the shadows of the whole uh, covenant, all right? Because Christ is the substance. Now, let's go to Leviticus chapter 1. 
Now, all right, so I'm going to read this passage. We're going to look at the truth there, and then we're going to pray. All right, Leviticus chapter 1, we read up to verse 9. Leviticus chapter 1. So we're going to see a divine shadow in pictures, a divine shadow in, uh, uh, in shadows, in copies, all right? That's what we're going to see, a divine exchange in shadow. Uh, in this Leviticus chapter 1. I want you to turn your Bible there or you follow up the screen. As I read, I read the first nine verses. Leviticus chapter 1, I read from verse 1. Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting. You know in Exodus, God gave them uh, uh, instructions how to build the tabernacle of meeting. And in Exodus, they build that, all right? And when they set up everything, the Bible says, the glory of the Lord filled the place, the, the cloud would cover the place, that Moses could not even enter the tabernacle of meeting. And the Bible says, God now spoke, or God began to speak to Moses from the tabernacle of meeting. So what did God say? Let's follow. Are you with me? Look at verse 2 now. Leviticus chapter 1. Verse 2 now. Speak to the children of Israel. So this is God speaking to Moses. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when any one of you brings an offering to the law, when not if, alright, so when any one of you brings an offering to the law, you shall bring your offering of the livestock of the herd of the flock. If his offering is a bond sacrifice of the head, let him offer a meal without blemish. Let someone say a meal without blemish. Alright, he shall Offer it of his own free will. Let someone say of his own free will. Of his own free will. All right, I want to hear you. All right, so at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the law, then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. Verse 5 He shall kill the bull before the law, and the priest Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and he shall skin in the burnt offering and cut it into pieces uh, the, hair, the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood in order on the fire then the priest Aaron's son shall lay the part, the head and the fat in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar, he shall wash the, its entrail and his leg with water and the priest shall burn all let's all say all so he shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord, I want to to say a sweet aroma unto the Lord. Now, look up now, look up now. I don't want to, you to miss anything. I want you to follow, alright? So what we just read uh, speaks of God's instructions, alright? On how a bond sacrifice should be made. All right, and we're going to see how this bond sacrifice uh, is a representation or a shadow of Christ and his death on the cross. All right, and we're going to see how a divine exchange between the worshiper, all right, that is the person that brings the sacrifice and the sacrifice that he brings, how an exchange takes place. You understand what I'm talking about? And what we are actually learning, we want to understand what happened at the cross of Christ. Is somebody paying attention? And then, because God already spoke in shadows under the old covenant, God already gave a picture of how the death of Christ is going to bring about a divine change, all right? And so what we are learning now, we are learning from what happened in the past, and that makes us to understand the reality that has already taken place, all right? So let me summarize, let me give you a summary of what happened, all right? So this is what God said to them. Now pay attention, look up everybody, and uh, there are some pictures you're going to see on the screen that is going to help you as well. So God says, now when you come before me, all right, so when a worshiper come, you don't come empty-handed, all right? So when you come before the tabernacle of meeting, you have to come with a lamb, you have to come with a bull. A honey man, he said it must be a male without blame. Just like you see in the picture, a spotless animal. If somebody pay attention, animal that is innocent. Most of the time, within just a year, all right? An innocent animal, male without blemish, all right? So that is what a worshiper works in with, 
all right, before the tabernacle of, of God. Now, we're still going to talk more about that, but I just want you to understand. So, he walks in, all right, just like you walk into the church, all right, all right, and then you walk in with your own animal, all right, and that animal is a male without blemish. Now, we're going to look at that, all right. So, he walks in with his animal to the tabernacle, and then he goes to meet the priest, all right, and he said, priest, all right, I brought my animal because I know I have sinned, but I want the blessings of God, and I know that God cannot bless a sinner. Somebody pay attention. I have been so wicked to my neighbor. I have done this. I have done that. But you know what? I want the favor of God. I want the blessings of God. And I'm bringing this anima as a substitute for me. I'm bringing anima for an atonement for my sin. Atonement means getting to cover your sin. All right. So he walks with his anima. All right. And then he present it to the priest. Now and then the priest will say, "Now listen to this. Now put your hands on your anima." So he placed his hands on his animal, both of his hands on his animal, and what he's doing at that time, now pay attention to this, and then change is taking place. Now look up. So when he lays his hands on his animal, now he joined himself to his animal, all right? So you have the sacrificer, all right? And then the sacrifice. Is somebody paying attention? And so there's a connection. There's, there, there's a legal union, all right? There's an identification. So he identifies with his animal by laying his hand. And not only that, pay attention now. So when he lays his hand on his animal, he transfers all his sins to the animal. All the sins that he has committed, the lie, the adultery, the fornication, the wickedness, the murder, every evil that he has done, as soon as he stands before the Lord, before the tabernacle with his animal, innocent animal, all right, then he transfers all his sins, not just his sins alone, but pay attention, he transfers all the penalties and the punishment of his sins to that animal. Somebody pay attention? So the guilt of sin, the shame, the condemnation, and the cause, and the punishment, and all those evil. Alright? Now, the judgment of God that should come upon him, he does what? He transfers it to the animal. Alright? And then he gets something in return. Now, what will, he, what will he get in return? Because when you talk of an exchange, you are talking of you giving something and receiving another thing in return, all right? Now, giving something for a substitute, that's what it means. Yeah. So, as a sacrifice, he lays his hands on the animals, all right? And then he gets something back. Now, what is transferred now is the innocence of that animal. Do you understand? The righteousness of this animal is transferred to him. That's why God says it must be a made without blemish, signifying. Pure, clean, all right? So he get the purity of the animal, and then he transfer his sins and iniquities to that animal. Not only does he get the purity of the animal, he gets all the blessings of righteousness, all right? Yeah. And when he's standing before the Lord, now listen to this, God does not see that man. Even though that man walks in with his sins, with the guilt of his sins, uh, with his wickedness, as soon as this transaction is done, there's an exchange that has taken place, that man is walking back home as though he never did anything wrong. He's walking back home free from his sin. He's walking back home free from the guilt of the sin, free from the shame of the sin, free from the punishment and judgment that should come upon him. Now, that's a divine exchange. You understand what I'm talking about, all right? Now, we're going to look at it one by one and we're going to see how Jesus Christ is actually our own lamb, alright? How Jesus Christ is actually our atoning sacrifice and we're going to see exactly what happened at the cross of Christ, alright? But that is exactly uh, the way it is done under the old covenant. So let's go back to our text, alright? Leviticus chapter 1. Now I want us to look at uh, these five things, alright? Number one, alright? So as I've said, the worshipper must approach God with a male without blemish. Now pay attention to what that means, alright? Right? Now, so, no one walks into God's presence, now, expecting God's blessings on his own self-righteousness. You can't, all right? Now, so, you don't walk in, all right, into God and without an animal. I say, yes, I'm qualified, Lord. No, you're going to die, but it's going to kill you. Do you know why? Because all our sins have come short of the glory of God. There is no one that can stand before God, are you with me, in his own righteousness. Somebody pay attention? So there is nothing that you, all right, and those worshippers in, in, under the old covenant, they understood this very clearly, that don't come into God's presence without an animal, all right? What you are saying, because if you walk in without an animal, you are telling God, God, I'm innocent, God, I'm righteous, I've never done anything wrong, I've never thought anything wrong, I've never said anything wrong, I deserve all your blessings. That's what you are saying, but that is not true. Is somebody pay attention? 
So that's why God said, don't walk in like that. So when you want to walk in, you walk in with your animal. In other words, you are saying, God, I acknowledge that I am not righteous. I acknowledge that I'm not I'm a sinner. Are you with me? And I brought something, an animal that is going to atone for my sin. Somebody paying attention? Yeah. And do you know what? Jesus Christ is the only one, all right? Jesus Christ is the only one that has atoned for our sin. You know, under the old covenant, the animals and the, the blood of the animals is killed and all that, that only covered their sin, all right, just for a while. But it's only Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ that can take away sin completely. I want us to know that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. That's why I'm saying Jesus Christ is my own Lamb. Right? So he's our own sacrifice. He's, he's the Lamb of God. In John chapter 1 verse 29, John the Baptist, when he looked at Jesus, when he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. And do you know what? The Jews, they understand what he's talking about. So they said, oh, so I don't need to walk to the, to the tabernacle again, to, to the table with an animal. Because God himself has provided a sacrifice for all. Are you with me? That's what God did for all. So God does not want anyone to walk in with any animal anymore. Somebody pay attention. Because God himself has found a suitable sacrifice that is going to take away all our sin. And that is who Jesus is. Just like under the old covenant, the animal must be spotless. It must be a male without blemish. How many of us know that Jesus is without sin? All right. The Bible says, First John three five. John the beloved says, and you know that He was manifested. That is Jesus to take away our sins, and in Him there is no sin. That's what I'm saying. In Christ, in Christ. there is no sin. There is no sin. So that is what's qualifying Him. All right, to be our atoning sacrifice. Because he had no sin. The animal must be what? A male without blemish. It must be spotless. And that is who Jesus is. Peter said of him, 1 Peter 2.22, he committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. Now, Apostle Paul said of Jesus, God made him who knew no sin to be seen for all. He knew no sin. He committed no sin. No sin was found in him. How many of us know that when they brought Jesus, when they arrested Jesus, and they brought Jesus before for the priest. Now, look at Matthew 26. The Bible said the chief priest, the elders, all the council, they sought false testimony against Jesus. Do you know what? They brought so many people. They brought many false witnesses. They say, you guys, you have been in Jesus' meeting. You follow me about. Is there anything that he did wrong? Can you, can you, do you remember anything they said wrong? The Bible said they found none. Let them say they found none. They none. Can you imagine? False witnesses, all right? They gather people together and they found nothing, all right? And eventually, two dumb people came forward and said, We had him. He said he's going to destroy this temple and pull it down and then rebuild it in three days, all right? That is the only thing they could find. And you know that is dumb, all right? Because he was talking about his own body. But you know what am I telling you? That Jesus Christ, now that the, the man with our plan is a picture of Jesus Christ. Yeah. God is talking about Jesus. Yeah. God is saying the time is coming. I'm going to get a sacrifice. I'm going to bring my son, holy, righteous, perfect, without sin, and he's going to take away all the sins of the world. Yes. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you know Pilate, the governor? Now, when they brought him and they were saying, crucify him, crucify him, he said, what if has he done? I listened to him. I cross-examined him. I find no fault in him. Eventually, he said to them, well, I am innocent of this just person, of the blood of this just person. So, what am I talking about? That Jesus Christ today, all right, is the reality. Jesus Christ today is the antitype of a lamb or a bull that is a male without blemish. Hallelujah. So what does God expect? God expects just like under the old covenant that the worshiper walking with the animal. Somebody pay attention with their lamb and that worshiper has so much trust and confidence in, in the fact that that animal is going to take away his sin. That that animal is going to cover his sin. That the blood of that animal is going to appease the wrath of God. God also wants us to know and to believe that Jesus Christ as the lamb of God has come and he has died and you know he has taken away your sin. That's what I'm saying. He has taken away my sin. All right. Now, not only that. Now, listen to this. Now, you see, when the worshiper comes with the animal, he, he, he does it out of his own free will. In other words, he must not be forced to do it. Is somebody paying attention? That's why we don't force you, cajole and manipulate you to give offering. It must be freely. It must be voluntarily. 
God does not take anything that we give grudging. Somebody pay attention. Yeah. Even Christ Jesus, his death on the cross had to be what? Willingly. Alright? God did not force Jesus to die on the cross for our sake. As a matter of fact, he did not do it reluctantly. You know what he said in John chapter 10 verse 11? He said, I'm a good shepherd. A good shepherd give his life for the sheep. Look at what he said in verse 16. Uh, look at it from verse 17. He said, therefore, John 10 17, my father loves me because I laid down my life. Now look at what he said. I laid it down. He did it willingly that I may take it again. No one take it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This command have I received from my father. And you know that is exactly what God said. The instruction of God that a worshiper that works in with his sacrifice must be of his own free will. And Jesus Christ is the soft and the reality of that. He gave us his life willingly. Let's not say he died for me. Died for me. Voluntarily. Yeah. Nobody asked the Son of God to die on the cross for them. Did you pray about that? Nobody prayed. He did it freely out of love for all, all right? So Jesus Christ did that willingly. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know when they came to arrest him and uh, uh, Peter was saying, no, I'm not going to allow that. And then he took out his sword and, and, and cut off the ear of the high priest servant. And Jesus said, no, put your sword back into the sheet. He said, well, what do you think? Don't you think I can call forth, I can ask the father, and then we send many legions of angels to defend me? No, I want to do it willingly. All right. So the, the lamb came and he, he died for our sin willingly. Now listen to another thing. All right. And this is where I'm coming to. Now, I told you earlier that when the, 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 the sacrificer or the worshiper or the offerer walks into the tabernacle, now listen to this, he walks in with his animal and male without blemish, now, and he's doing it willingly. Now listen to this, and then he has to lay his hand on the animal. Now, please pay attention to this. He had to identify with his sacrifice. So the sacrificer identified with his sacrifice. And as I said earlier, that the hand must now becomes a substitute for him. Now, pay attention to this, all right? So, can I have the picture, please? So you see, now, the, the, the sacrificer, all right, the worshiper is standing with his animal before the law. And then he lays his hands on the animal. And once he lays his hands on the animal, listen to this, all right? I told you that he transfers his sins to the animals, all right? He transfers his guilt, his shame, his condemnation, the wrath and the judgment that should fall upon him as a sinner is transferred to the animal. And in exchange, then he receives the innocence, the purity, the righteousness of the animal. And the animal will eventually be killed, the blood shed on the altar, and then it will be born. But pay attention to this. Now, the same way. Now, listen to this. On the cross, that is exactly what Jesus can be hung on the cross means. Now, so on the cross, now pay attention to this. What Jesus took from us is our sin. Is somebody paying attention? So, why Jesus was hung on the cross? Now, anyone that put his trust in him, I want you to know this that Jesus Christ has been a substitute for you. So he took your place. Is someone pay attention? Because that is what the animal did. Now, so under the old covenant, the animal takes the place of the, the worshiper. All right. Now, because now, even though he was the one that was guilty, all right, once he lays the hands on the animal, identified with the animal, his guilt is taken away from him. His sin is taken away from him and it is put on the animal. And do you know something? God sees the animal as guilty. Are you, are you with me? God sees the animal condemned and not the worshiper anymore. Now, so we need to understand it. This is important that on the cross, and as many of all that put our faith and trust in Christ Jesus, that what God sees on the cross is you there. What God sees on the cross is your sin. Is somebody paying attention? Now, look at Isaiah. Isaiah, the prophet, prophesied about it. He's Isaiah 53, verse 4. All right. It says, Surely he bore, he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. All right. Who did that? Jesus Christ. He was prophesied by Jesus that on the cross, now what Jesus was carrying is my grief. Is somebody paying attention? Now, God wants you to understand that. Now, listen to me. If you don't understand that, you will never enjoy the Christian life. So, I need to have this clear picture in my mind. Are you with me? That on the cross, Christ took my place. On the cross, Christ took my sin. 
Just like the innocent animal uh, took the place of the worshiper under the old covenant. So on the cross, that is what Jesus did. So all my sin, the lie, the, the fornication, the adultery, and whatever I have done in the past, now, whatever sins I'm going to commit in the future, all of it together have been transferred to Jesus on the cross. Somebody paying attention? So God does not want me to see myself as a sinner anymore. God does not want me to see myself as a fornicator, as an adulterer, as a liar, as a wicked person anymore because a transaction has taken place, a divine exchange has taken place. But there are still many Christians that don't understand. Are, are you paying attention? So, we, 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 God wants us to see Jesus, even though he was a righteous man, even though he was innocent, he was without sin, but on the cross, on the cross, he became our sacrificial lamb. On the cross, now, as many that identify with Jesus, every evil that you have ever done has been transferred to him. Is somebody paying attention? All the sin that you have ever committed, the sin that you are committing, the one you will commit in the future, all of our sins, everything has been transferred to him. So on the cross, that is what he carried. Not only that, he carried all the shame. Isaiah said, the grief, the sorrow, he carried everything. He said he was stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Now look at that verse. By the way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's say God laid on him. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. I want to hear you say God laid on Christ. Lord, Lord, Lord. All my sin, Lord, Lord. past, Lord, present, Lord, and future. Lord, Lord. So you see all of your sin. Are, are you with me? Now, there is no single sin that you have ever committed that was not laid on Christ. Are you with me? If truly you identify with Christ, all of your sin is laid on Him. And that is where when you come before God, pay attention, and then you keep talking about sin and about sin, God knows you don't understand. Is somebody paying attention? Because when you appear before Him, He does not see sin in your life anymore. Are you with me? Because all has been transferred to His Son Jesus. That's what Christ did on the cross. God laid on him all your sin. And God wants you to know that. And this morning I want you to be conscious of that. That Christ carried all your sin on the cross. Let's not say all my sin. First Peter 2 24. Peter said, Who himself, talking about Jesus, bore our sin in his own body on the tree. So on the tree, what was Jesus carrying? Not his sin because he was without sin. He was carrying my whole sin. All my sin, all my sin. So God does not want you to hold on to any sin. Is somebody paying attention? God does not want you to come, and every time you come to God, you are weeping and crying over the sin you committed uh, one month ago, one year ago, three years ago. No, friend. Now that means you don't understand that all your sin is on the cross. Because if you are still conscious of sin, and every time you are conscious of your fault and your mistake, you are not going to have confidence towards God. You are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. And that is why God provided Jesus as a substitute for us. Just like a worshiper walks in with an animal, God himself provided his soul and he called him his own lamb. And God said, Luke, when I put him on the cross, I lay on him all your sins, all your sins. All your sin. And do you know what? Not just sin. Now the Bible says, Galatians 3.13, Paul says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now pay attention, God's people. Don't miss this. So on the cross, what Jesus, when Jesus was hung on the cross, the Bible said God carried out an action, a divine action. And one of the things God did that God took my sin, are you with me? God took it from me and God laid it on Christ. But not only that, the cause of sin, are you paying attention? The cause of the law, all the punishment, all the judgment, God took it from me and placed it on his son, Jesus Christ. Somebody paying attention? Amen. 
That is why if you still identify with family calls, if you still identify with generational call, it simply means you are not aware of a divided chain that took place on the cross. All the causes that you want to talk about, that was what was placed on Christ on the cross. You have no cause anymore. Amen. But you see many Christians here all over the place, fasting and praying, trying to break a cause upon their head. Something is wrong with you. You don't get the picture. God placed all the calls on Christ on the cross. The Bible said cause is anyone that is hanged by the tree. So the Son of God was made a cause on the cross. Do you know why? So that you don't have to carry any cause anymore. And so when you identify with a generational cause, when you look at yourself and say there is a cause upon my life, that is an insult to God. You are saying, God, I don't believe you. You didn't take it from me. That is why many Christians don't enjoy the blessings of God in their life because they don't identify with what Christ did on the cross. God wanted to know, beloved, God wanted to know that Jesus took all your sin. God himself placed it on him. Is somebody paying attention? So there is no sin that the devil can condemn you all. You tell the devil, I'm aware of divine chain. All my sin was placed on the Son of God. And all the cause of the sin, all the punishment, all the judgment, everything was transferred to Christ. Is somebody paying attention? All right, so what do I get in return? Now listen to this. So when the worshiper placed their hands, all right, on the animal, all right. So now, first they transferred all their sins, all the wrongs that they have done, and all the judgment is transferred to the animal. And something happened to that animal. Now pay attention to this. And that animal, now listen to it. Don't miss this, all right. Can you go back to the picture? So the animal now is given to the priest, all right. And the priest asks the person, the worshiper that brings the animal, to kill the animal. That's what I'm saying, kill your animal. All right. It's not the priest that kill it for the man. The man has to kill the animal. All right. So when you kill the animal, they kill the worshiper, the sacrificer, kill his animal by himself. You know that word, you say, well, I execute this judgment on you. I'm the one that's supposed to die. But since all my sins have been transferred to you, then you die. Because the wages of sin is what? It's yeah. dead. It's dead. Alright, so the animal died in the place of the sinner. Is somebody paying attention? Now, the sinner is supposed to die, but once the sinner walks with his animal and is accepted, the animal becomes an atoning sacrifice. And so the animal died in the place of the worshiper. So you see, the worshiper slaughtered the animal. He executed the judgment that should come upon him, upon the animal. And then the priest collects the blood of the animals, alright, and then they sprinkle it all around the altar. So all the altar is covered with the blood, and the blood atone. Now listen to this, the blood cover the sin of that worshiper. Somebody pay attention? And that is not the end. That's not all that happened to the animal. And then the priest now take the animal, as you see in the picture, lay it on the breast and altar, and what will the priest do? He set the animals on fire. The animal is getting cut in pieces, and the animal is set on fire, and all of it is born unto the Lord. Let's not say all of it. So in other words, the animal cannot escape it. The animal has been killed, the blood covers the altar, and also the animal is consumed completely in the rot and the judgment of God. That is what the fire signifies. Now pay attention, pay attention, and I wanted to look at Christ Jesus, all right? Now don't forget, it's just a picture, all right? So if anybody asks you to go and kill an animal, I say something for you, say, I don't need that. God has killed his own animal for me, all right? The Lamb of God has taken away my sin. So you see, on the cross, something happened to Christ. So when Christ carried all of our sin, give me Second Corinthians chapter five verse twenty-one. When Christ, uh, when all our sins and iniquity was laid on Christ, the Bible says Second Corinthians five twenty-one. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So Christ became a sin or a sin offering for us. All right now. And you know him that sinners die, all right? Not only physical death, but also eternal death, spiritual death, which is separation from God. And that is why you see on the cross. So when Jesus was on the cross, all our sins, all the sins of mankind was laid on him. And because on the cross now, God is no longer seeing his son again. He's only paying attention. So what is God saying? God is seeing a sinner, a terrible sinner. And God released all his judgment on him. And that is why Jesus Jesus had to cry out, Lord, my Lord, my Lord, why have thou forsaken me? Because God forsakes sinner. God is too holy to behold iniquity. So for once, God turned his eyes away from his soul. Are you paying attention? Do you understand what I'm talking about? 
And then he died, and then he went to the grave, all right? He went to where sin is supposed to go to the hell, until God raised him up the third day. So what am I telling you? Christ has taken every rot, every judgment that God will have put on all. Now, so it is wrong for you to ever in your life respect God's rot or God's judgment. Somebody pay attention? Because... God, under the old covenant, they understood it very well. That once that animal is judged, the worshiper cannot be judged. Yes. Somebody pay attention. It doesn't matter the evil that he has done. Do you know something? He walk away, all right? Because someone has taken his place and has received all the judgment. And that's what I wanted to know. There are many of us that are scared and afraid of the judgment of God. Oh, God is going, oh, I know why this is not happening. I know why I'm not getting the miracle. It's because of the sin that I've done. And God is punishing me for my sin. You are not aware of the divine chain that has taken place at the cross. God cannot punish you for sin anymore. God cannot judge you for sin. Do you know why? All the wrath of God, all the anger of God, all the judgment of God, he has released it upon his sons on the cross. Amen. And do you know what? That is a substitute for you. That's a substitute for you. Now look at what the scripture says very well about it as we get ready to pray. So Jesus took it all. Let's not say he took it all. All my sins, all my judgment, all the wrath of God. He took it all for me. All, all of it. Not some of it. So there is no punishment waiting for you anywhere from God. Are you with me? There is no judgment waiting from you from God. If anybody tell you God is going to judge you, tell them I'm aware of divine nature. He took my place already. He received my judgment already. God wants you to know that. God wants you to walk into, come into his presence with boldness. And you don't want you to stand in his presence without any fear, without any shame, without any guilt, without any condemnation. Because you know exactly what Christ did on the cross for you. He took your place. He took your judgment. And that is why in spite of all the wrong that you do, God still bless you. God will still favor you. He will still show you mercy. Are you with me? Because a legal transaction has taken place on your behalf. On the cross. You know, lay hands on the animal is a legal thing. Alright? Right from that time, you don't, you don't punish that man for the sins again. You punish the animal. You kill the animal. And that's exactly what Jesus did. That is just a picture of Jesus and his death on the cross. What the the son of man died on the cross. God is not punishing the world for sins anymore. Is somebody paying attention? No. The only people that go to hellfire are those who rejected the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Are you with me? People don't go to hellfire for their sins. Are you with me? No. They go to hellfire for rejecting the sacrifice for their sins. And so God said, well, you don't, you don't want to accept the punishment, the judgment that my son received for you, then you want to receive it for yourself, all right? Now, so that is the only reason why people go to hell. And I want you to know that God wants each and every of his children to understand it. And so when you, when you come boldly before the Lord, God wants you, and you are talking about your sin, you are scared, you are afraid, and your mind is telling you God is punishing you for something that you have done. You don't understand. He won't do that anymore. He can't do that anymore. He has put it on his soul. And once that animal is killed, now listen to me. Now, he has atoned for the sins. Yes. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he atoned for our sin. Let's all say he atoned for my sin. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, I read it from New Living Translation. Say, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself no longer. I want everyone to see this in New Living Translation as you get ready to pray. 2 Corinthians 5, 19, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against them. Let's not say no longer. <laughs> I want to hear you loud and say no longer. No longer. So God no longer can't our sins against us. That word can yeah, means in food. God does not charge. God does not seek to punish us for our sin. Somebody paying attention? Oh, is that a line sex to sin, all right? If you are truly a child of God, you don't love sin. You don't want to sin, all right? But what I'm saying is that if you fall into sin, don't be expecting the judgment of God. Don't expect punishment from God because he already punished his soul and he will no longer hold your sins against you. That is the gospel truth. That is what God wants you to understand. Hallelujah. Because if you don't understand it, the devil will be judging you, punishing you, and you will think that is God punishing you for your sin. Yeah. God doesn't do that anymore. He no longer holds our sins against us. 
He no longer seeks to punish us for our sin. He has done that for his sons on the cross. Christ was killed. All right? And you know, of course, the people killed him. They said, crucify him, crucify him. Just like they, they, they worship and kill his animal. It is men that kill him. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. And his blood, now listen to it. His blood did not just cover our sin. His blood washes our sins away. Let's not say the blood of Jesus. Washes all my sins away. And do you know something about the, the, the honor the old covenant? When you bring your animal this year, all right, next year you need to bring another animal, all right? Because the blood, the, the atonement expires, all right? At most one year. But you know something about that blood of Jesus? He never expires, all right? His power never expires. He lives forever. Do you know why? Because he stays in God's presence at the right hand of God forever. And the Bible says he sits here as our advocate. Let's say I have an advocate. His name is Christ. And the Bible says he's a prophet of our sin. So every time in heaven, all right, the blood of Jesus is there. As the person of Christ, all right? Yeah. And the Bible says that our advocate, God sees always what he has done for us. Uh -huh. And that is why, as a believer, as a Christian, God does not hold any sins against us. Do you know why? Because the blood that has come for us is this speak till today. The blood speaks throughout eternity. And I wanted to know that this morning. I wanted to know that this morning as I read this scripture. That's 2 Corinthians 5 21. As we take the Holy Communion, I wanted to know this morning. There's a divine change that has taken place. Now Christ took all your sin. He took all the causes, all the punishment. And you know what? He gave you his righteousness in return. Second Corinthians 5 31 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for all, that we might become the righteousness of God. So he became sin for us, and then we became the righteousness of God. Now let me read other versions of the Bible. Horeku says, For he has made him who knew no sin, a sin offering for all, that we might become the justified of God. Let somebody shout, I am the Justified of God. I want to go say loud, say, I am the justified of God. Message Bible say, How are you ask in Christ? God put the wrong on him. Who never did anything wrong so that we could be what? Put right with God. Let's not say, I've been put right with God. Now that is what we got in return, all right? He got our sin, we got his righteousness. We became the justified. He became the condemned one. Is somebody paying attention? That is the divine. Change. That's the divine change. God forsook him, and then we are accepted unto God. Is somebody paying attention? Yeah. That is what he did. That is what he did for all. God's word translation says, say, God had Christ, who was sinless. He take, take our sin so that we might receive God's approval. Let's not say, I have received God's approval. Receive Can you give me God's word translation? God's approval. That is what you have now. Are you with me? Yes. Jesus got your sins, and then we got what? God's approval. Let's not say, I have God's approval. Alright? That means God is pleased with you all the time. Amplified Classic Edition say, For our sake, He made Christ virtually to be seen. Who knew no sin? So that in Him and through Him, we might become and deal with viewers being an example of the righteousness of God. We ought to be approved of and acceptable and in right relationship with Him by His goodness. I want you to rise to your feet and let's all say, I have right relationship, I have a right relationship with, God. with God through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. That's what God wanted to understand this word. That because of what Christ did, you receive in that chain his righteousness. You are justified now in God's presence. That's why when you when you stand in his presence, God wants you to act boldly. He wants you to pray with confidence. Are you with me? And not be talking about your sin and your sin and your sin. All right. God is saying, You don't understand my son took that sin. Are you with me? He took it on the cross and he gave you his righteousness. He gave you his right. So in the presence of God, as you stand in the sight of God, you are right. He put you right with God. Are you with me? You have a right relationship with God. Don't let the devil take that from you. Is somebody paying attention? Don't let the devil ever tell you, oh, 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 look at what you have done. So God, God has turned his back on you. No, friend. If anybody tell you that, they don't understand what has happened. On the cross, Christ became for us a sin and a sin offering. And do you know what? God will never turn his back on us anymore. Is somebody paying attention? Because he forsook his son already. He will never forsake those who identify with that. Just like when a man places his hand on the animal, 
in the presence of God. God is a witness to an action that is taking place. Is somebody paying attention? Amen. God will not visit that man with rot again. God will not visit that man with punishment again. Amen. That man is walking out with joy. That man is walking out in confidence. And do you know what? All the blessings of God are released upon that man. Do you know why? Because the blessings of God are for the righteous. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 10, as you begin to pray, Proverbs chapter 10, verse it says, the blessings are on the head of the righteous. And as I'm saying, you may be righteous. I have his blessings on my head. So you see, when the worshiper, the sacrifice, the sacrificer places his hand on his sacrifice, he puts all his sins on the head of the animal. Amen. But you know something? The innocence and the righteousness of the animal is put on him. And all the blessings is put on him. Beloved, that's exactly what happened at the cross. Amen. Our sins was put on his head, Amen. and then his righteousness and his blessing fall on our head. Don't let anybody tell you that it's a curse upon you. What you have on you now is a blessing. You tell the person, oh, yeah. over 2,000 years ago, someone already took my course. He already took it for me. I can't carry it again. The only thing that you are permitted to carry is the blessings of the righteous. It's the blessings of the righteous. Romans 5, 17, for if by one man offended rain, through the one much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So when you receive the righteousness, you are qualified to reign. Let's not say, I will reign. I will reign. It's because we have his righteousness. And this morning, I just wanted to close your eyes. I wanted to have a clear picture. Just picture it in your mind. As I told you about the, the worshiper that walks into the tabernacle of meeting under the old covenant. And he walks with his animal. I wanted to see Jesus. The Lamb of God this morning. I wanted to see that Jesus came the Lamb of God. And in the presence of God, in the sight of God, all your sin was transferred to Jesus. I wanted to see those sin. Those sin that you still feel condemned about this morning. Those sin that the devil still reminds you of. If somebody pay attention, those sin that still bring guilt and shame. You still feel guilty about those things. I wanted to see transferred to Jesus. He took it from you. Stop carrying it again. Stop carrying it in your mind. Do you know what? What? He took your shame. The Bible says he bore our grief and our sorrow. God does not want you to keep carrying it again. Don't let the devil put it on you. It has been put on Christ Jesus. It has been put on it. The same sin, the guilt, the shame, and everything. Every result of sin. Every punishment of sin. Every penalty of sin. That is what Jesus took on the cross. And this morning, I wanted to see it in your mind. I wanted to see that it has been taken from you. Amen. The sin that the devil still condemned you has been taken away. The guilt has been taken away. The shame has been taken away. The punishment has been taken away. Don't be afraid. God is not punishing for sin. He won't punish you. The judgment of God won't fall on you. If anybody tell you God's judgment is falling on you, tell the person, I know of divine exchange. Cry took it for me. So I can't take it again. And this morning, that's what God wanted to see. God wanted to see his son. He bore it all. He carried it all. He took it all. Don't take it back. Don't take it back. He took it all. And do you know what? He died. He, he experienced the death that belongs to sinners. The separation that belongs to sinners. He actually went to hell where sinners should go. That's what Jesus did for all. That's what Jesus did. And do you know what? In that chain, you have his righteousness. In that chain, you have his grace now. You have his power. You have his authority. You have his anointing. You have the blessings of Christ. You have the favor of Christ. God wanted to walk in that consciousness. Just like the worship of that old covenant. Now leaves the tabernacle. Walking. And then he walks and he goes home with full confidence and assurance that God's blessing now is upon him. That's the way God wanted to see yourself. Don't let anybody take that away from you. The blessings of God are upon you. God wants you to walk about and move about freely with boldness and confidence that God is on your side. And know that God will never forsake you, will never be displeased with you. That you have God's approval now. You are in right standing and right relationship with God as long as you have identified with Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. Father, we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, for divine exchange that took place at the cross of Christ. Thank you, Lord, because he took our place so that we may take his place in the family of God. Oh, thank you, Lord, because he took our sins so that we can take his righteousness. He took our call so that we can take his blessing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for you You struck him on our behalf. Lord, you, the Bible says he was smitten by you. You laid on him in it with your whole heart. Father, we ask, Lord, that we will walk in this consciousness all the days of our life. We will never, never forget again the law on the cross. Christ already took it all. The law we've got all that Christ has on the cross. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Every condemnation we reject this morning. Because we know it is not coming from God. Every guilt we reject this morning. Every shame we reject this morning. No, we know it is not coming from God because Christ has already taken it. Oh, Limbra Lebo Sheteriama. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errors of Revival and get additional teachings and materials, for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org. Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk. This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org Thanks for listening.